Hola amiguitos, hola amigos, hola amigos, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo te ha ido? Dorian here from Hoovalux, how are you today? I've got a Electrolux 1600 watt The Boss. This boss, which currently looks a little bit like Mr. Burns at the moment because it's a bit old and needing some TLC, some Hoovalux TLC put on it. It belongs to some friends of mine, Kat and Carlos, Carlitos, from España. Este aspirador is de ellos. This is their vacuum cleaner. So they gave it to me. They mentioned, oh, our vacuum cleaner isn't working very good. And I said, just send it over to me and I will take a look at it. Now, I've got a number of Electroluxes and I've worked on a number of Electroluxes for cleaning them up and stuff but I've never actually worked on one of these before, this, the Boss. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of the vacuum first of all, and um, I'll switch it on and we'll try and diagnose what's going on with it. So I've taken you off the tripod to do a little quick look around. And it's the Boss. Filter 2284, 1600 watt edge cleaning, height adjustment, pile adjustment here, long pile and short pile. I assume that is the exhaust filter. The logo in on the front, the bag door release, and the carrion handle. It's quite a nice looking vac, actually, to be honest. I quite like it. It's been sitting in the garage for a week while I've been doing some others, and uh, I quite like the look of it. Moving around the back, it's a bit dusty. We have product type serial number there, 1600 watts max. The boss made in China. So here we have the hose where it comes out. Wraps up and around. Oh, sorry, this is where it comes in, sorry. So the dirt comes in through here, through these bellow pipes here onto this, up through this handle, which yep, comes off. Aha! I found the culprit! That's the reason! Look at that! Ay, Dios mío, se roto! Está cagado de mierda! It's full of stuff inside there. So, that's our first port of call, before I even switch it on. Uh, looks like, yeah, the tools are missing off it. And I think it would have had a pipe because there's a little notch there and then there's a gap here where it's sort of like a, a tube fits into it. So I've got some spare tools. I don't know if I've got the spare tools for this, but uh, definitely I've got some spare tools. I've definitely got a spare pipe that should fit it. Seems to be a standard size. Moving around to this side, we've got the cord. So we've got the cord release here to release the cord that is the that is the release pedal for the handle and then on the other side here this is the power button which I think is pretty cool so the power buttons on that side and that is pretty much it to be honest for now but when I like I said when I took this hose off I could see there was an issue here, so that's where we need to start. Oh, very quickly, I'll show you the bag. I did know. I did look inside. I have looked inside. Ugh. Ah, sorry. Bag release. The door release. So we got a filter down here, which looks like a HEPA filter, but definitely needs a cleaning. Here we've got a paper bag, double micro, but still. Oh, actually, no, it is supposed to be black. <laughs> I thought it was, um, no, it is supposed to be, it's got a lot of fine dust inside there, so that will need coming out. Seems pretty straightforward to clean out the bag fill tube with two screws here. There's a little filter at the bottom. That's gonna need cleaning. And there we go, there's the motor filter. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it on the tripod and we're going to give it a bit of a vacuum out. Before I do anything, I'm going to <clears throat> vacuum out the back door. So next, I am going to if I spin you around, said Kylie Minogue. I'm going to vacuum out the inside of this. So I can feel a blockage from inside this. Now I'm not sure how this comes out, but I think there's a blockage in there. There's definitely a blockage down here, so I'm gonna pop this down here and see if I can suck out as much as I can from the blockage down in here. Hey, success! Now the blockage has been cleared from here because there was a almighty dunk as the dirt went through, you might have heard. And also now it's flowing freely and I can hear air flowing underneath here. And I can feel air. So from here to here is clear. What I need to verify is from here to here with the blockage. Now, I can actually, actually I can see it down in the pipe. I can actually see the blockage. So, I'm going to show you very quickly how to clear a blockage in a pipe, but I have to remove this pipe first. So, let me get this removed and I'll show you how to clear a blockage. Actually, do you know what? We'll do it together. I've changed my mind because I don't know how to do it. Probably, you will probably learn how to do it as well. So, first thing I assume, well, I'm going to take it off anyway because it needs a cleaning, is this bag fill tube. There's three screws holding this on. That's the bag 
holder cleared. Uh, a little bit of muck in there. So what I need to do is Right, there's a metal, I can see a clip. So I can see a metal clip, ring clip, holding this on. And I think if I do it like that, it's gonna spring off across the room. Okay, it's got that on it. And now, another clip on the top of that ah yes and there we go so there we go I've got the hose disattached from this so what I'm gonna do is spin you around and uh, now I've never actually tried this myself so there's a first time for me as well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and pop off this part of the handle there's a little clip on that side and a little clip on that side and the trick is to get both sides of the clip off a little bit so that I can remove there oh my god <laughs> um, I think that might work without having to do my trick We shall try. I'm not even going to bother hoovering there, but I'm going to put it straight in the bin. Yeah, it's working now. Raffle ticket, anyone? One, six, nine, you're a winner! Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it back together because I want to give it a go. This is a really, uh, this is a really bad design that you can't just pop this off easily. You've got to faff around with the entire bloody thing. So we've got this clip there. And we've got that, which seems to hold the bag fill tube on and then we got this metal clip old year roses old year roses that goes up that goes on work out where that metal clip goes. I think it goes in this groove down there. Yes. Then that. Then the bag filler. Actually it might be the Oh 
like that over it. Okay, screw it back on. hanging off my arm. Oosh, go away. It's quite a bag, it's quite a small bag compartment area, which is quite surprising. I need to pop this back on. That's on. Now I'm going to pop the hose. Into there. Right. Actually, before, I'm just going to pop this bag door bolt on. Let's take a look at the underneath. Let's take a look at the belly. Right. Brush roll is absolutely covered. in the hair. Now I can see two screws to release this. I don't know. Like I said, I've never done this one before. I didn't. Well, how did you get how did you get to that? How do you get to that? I don't really know. How do you get this plate off? I have no idea how to remove this plate off to get out to get to the brush roll. I can't see any more. Screw holes. One there, one there. That's for the wheels. Oh. Does it come off at the top? Ah, oh, yes. There we go. That's how you get to it. The belt looks alright. The brush roll is in a bit of a mess. Right, let me just get the vacuum over this.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scissors and I'm going to cut all this hair off the brush roll. So I'm not going to film now, because what's the point? Um, so I've got my little knife here, so I'm going to get rid of all the, all the hair attached to it. So that is how you defleur for brush roll. Don't be embarrassed because everybody's vacuum cleaner looks the same pretty much. So, I have here, and oh no, that's the old one. I have a new belt for it. So I'm going to pop this belt on the spindle. It's in really, really good condition. It just needs a bit of maintenance. Pop it around here. Now push it into the grooves, which are square. Oh, awesome. This is going to look so cool when I've finished cleaning it. There we go. Temporarily put that on for now. Goodbye, old belt. Spin it over. Two screws down in the deep hole. Excellent. Now, tools away, tidy up, housekeeping. Quick vacuum up. Get the plug. It's got quite a nice long plug on it, to be honest. I'm going to switch it on. Let's try it. Wow. That sounds really, really good. I'm so impressed. Right, let's give it a quick demo. Let me get a so bag. In. I've put down some sawdust and some porridge oats, and we will give this a go.
Well, I have to say, I am really, 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 really genuinely impressed with that. It's got a lovely big fat wide brush roll on it. Reminds me a bit of um, a Dyson brush roll, you know, from the shape of it. <clears throat> it's sucked up everything, it's brought up the pile. No problems at all, it's not that loud. Now, I've put in this, the bag for a, um, the HEPA flow bag for a Henry. It fits on it perfectly. It's a bit big, but it still, it fits fine and it works really, really well. So, I'm really chuffed with that. That's worked out really well. So, because this is one that, it's not mine, I'm doing it for a, for a friend, for a family. It's not a collector. It's a family who will be using this day in, day out. So, <clears throat> I don't really want, I've had people, I've had a number of people ask me to take a look at their vacuum cleaners and they're all bagless Dysons and stuff and I won't touch it because I haven't got a clue. It's not that I have anything against Dysons, I have the Dyson handheld and I have a, a smaller Dyson upstairs. I just don't like working on the bagless ones, I like working on the bagged ones, each to their own. A lot of collectors out there, they love the bagless ones, which is fine, I like looking at them and using them, but not particularly for collecting so what i'm going to do is because i fixed it which wasn't really that much to fix we're going to give it a bit of a spruce up which it desperately needs and then this thing can go back to kath and carlos tomorrow in the back of the hubby's car and uh, can go back to them to live another day until it probably gets blocked again and then i will fix it again <laughs> I'm going to get a bucket of nice soapy water, hot soapy water, pop this back on the bench and we'll give it a bit of a spruce up. So we're back, I've got a lovely bucket of lovely soapy water, hot soapy water, loads and loads of cloths, I've got piles of cloths I use in the car. First thing I'm going to do before I start cleaning this is to switch it off and plug it on me. Try not to get my fat guts in it. If I stand forward, I should be all right. So I'm just going to wring out these cloths. I'm going to wring them out, but I'm not going to wring them out completely, completely. They're not going to cause them. You know what I mean. I'm going to take this button back off. I'm going to leave it soak in there because it's a bit manky. And... To just undo the hose so it'll give me better access for cleaning. So I'm going to clean the outside of it first, starting at the top and working my way down. I really like this, I quite like this back actually. I'm going to try and have a look for one for myself. It's not bad actually, it's really not bad. The back of it is kind of dusty, but after this, it's going to look a lot better. Not too scratched up. So a couple of people have asked me about, um, do I speak Spanish? And yeah, I do speak Spanish. I used to, uh, I used to live in Colombia, in Bogota. I moved there in 1997 and then came back in 2003. Um, I did come back once in 2001. Um, my grandfather was ill and whilst I was here, he passed away. So, I went there initially just for a couple of months, really, to see how it was. I didn't plan to stay out there that long, but uh, I got a job out there teaching English. And uh, I started off working for a small institute called Multilingua 
in a neighborhood. I, I was living in a neighborhood called Galerias. It's funny, the neighborhood used to be called Sears, as in the store Sears, because there was a big store there. And it was the big thing in Bogota at the time. And so the area was called Sears. Then when Sears left there, and another, it was part of a shopping center complex, and it was called Galerias, they changed the name of the whole area, the neighborhood, to Galerias. Plus there were a lot of galleries there as well, but uh, anyway, they changed it to Galerias. So I was working for a small institute, and I said to the guy, I said, I don't know how to teach English, I know how to speak it, but I certainly don't know how to teach it. And he said, that doesn't matter. He said, you're a ginger, redhead, a British person. Just having you on our books will attract students to come to the Institute because you're British. Everyone likes British. You're not American, nothing against Americans, but it's just that you're different. So I got a job. So what I used to do was I would go home. This is when I, for the first couple of months, I would go home. Uh, I, I started off teaching the basics, the, the first level of students that would come in for the English. Um, I mean, they, they were private students. They weren't school kids or anything. This was a private institute. Um, so I would teach the basic ones. So what I would do, I'd go home, prepare the class, learn how to teach the class, learn how what I was talking about. So I was the first person to learn how we said these things, then go back the next day and then teach the class. And I would do that, and I was doing that for months and months and months and months. And that's how I taught them. So after I'd done that for about 18 months, I decided that I needed to, you know, and then I, could, I was working on... Uh, higher levels of students with higher levels of English because you know they, they would ask questions about you know well why do you say that for a preposition or you know the masculine or well there is no masculine and no feminine and vocabulary so I used to help the higher level students then with pronunciation and stuff like that don't laugh there's a lot of Colombians going around now with Welsh accents going, Oh, now, come here, man, in it. Just now in a minute. I didn't teach them now in a minute, I promise. But yeah, I loved it there. So anyway, so I worked for that institute for about 18 months. And a friend of mine, American and Jamaican, uh, said there was a job going in a university, quite a high up university, actually, in Bogota. Um, where the was where the president's kids go, r former presidents and stuff. So it was a quite a high end university, a proper business university. So I worked there, and I had an office, and I had a desk, and I had my own class, and I worked there for well, it must have been about another eighteen months, just under eighteen months. I worked there. But uh, I didn't particularly like it. The students were very spoilt, and it was, I don't know, it was just, it, I, I didn't really like it that much. So then I moved to another university, which was the Universidad Católica de Colombia, the Catholic University of Colombia. And those kids, don't get me wrong, the, the kids in the posh university, they, the majority of them were eager to learn. But there was a lot of them who were just... They were there because that mummy and daddy had enough money to pay for them to go there and they weren't interested in learning whatsoever. Whereas when I worked for the Universidad Católica, the Catholic University, everybody there wanted to learn because their parents had paid for them to, to, to go there and of course paid money that wasn't so readily available for them so they were eager to learn because their parents had sacrificed for them to go there. So I really, did, really, really enjoyed working in that university. Um, and yeah, I was there for six, six years. And I learned Spanish. I learned Spanish by watching TV. I didn't study Spanish, so my Spanish is terrible for gram grammar. Terrible for speaking in past tense. 
future tense, third person tense, that kind of thing. I kind of like speak everything like I was a five year old child. But they, I'm understood, which is the most important thing. So whenever we go anywhere, I do like going to the Spanish speaking countries, of course. And um, I'll speak Spanish when we went to Bernadome. And we were outside of Bernadome and I was with the Spanish. I was only speaking in the Spanish. Even if they answered me in English, I was still I was still speaking in Spanish. And I would just say to them, please, can we speak in Spanish? Because I don't get much opportunity to practice. And uh, they obliged. They quite liked the, They liked it. Made an effort. Not just una cerveza, por favor. But a bit more of a conversation. So, we're getting there. I'm just cleaning this hose. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to work on this base part. So I'm going to lower it down. I really enjoyed my time in Colombia. So I lived in the city of Bogota, which is directly over a fault, the San Andreas fault line. So Bogota is a huge city. It's like Birmingham. It's a massive, massive city. And it's 2,630 2, meters above sea level. It's a very, very high up city, surrounded by the mountains. And it's quite strange because it is literally, the whole city is on a plateau. It's on this big, massive, flat plateau. Mountains below, mountains behind and around the side. It's, it's quite an odd city when you look at it geographically of where it's located because you don't expect a city to be in the middle of nowhere up on the mountain on the San Andreas fault line. And they have everything there. I don't know why people call it bloody third world because they have everything there you can get here. Sky TV. I mean, this was back, back in the day. And uh, I mean, there, were, there are very, very poor neighborhoods, dangerous neighborhoods, but they were doing a lot of changes there whilst I lived there. I noticed a big change on the city. They built a massive transmillennium flexi bus route right through the city, from the north all the way down to the south, the center to the airport. Got rid of a lot of buses. They had, I'll tell you what they had advanced but before, way before, they had something called Picui Placa. So if you had a vehicle that, one of the numbers, so like one day you were allowed to drive your vehicle if it had an odd number, and then the next day you were allowed to drive your vehicle if it had an even number. And if it didn't, and you drove it, you'd get fined. Simples. So it reduced a lot of the emissions and uh, the air pollution, the air it vastly improved. Got rid of a lot of the old buses and taxis and like I said, put in this new transmillennium system right throughout the city. And um, demolished. Uh, it wasn't what I would call a favela, but the centre, down towards the centre in the south of the city, was definitely more the more poorer area. Um, you were fine down in the centre during the day, but then during the evening, it was a little bit more iffy, and you, you definitely wouldn't go in certain areas. But I, I never had any issues. I almost had an issue. This is quite funny. <coughs> I was going from the institute to the university, and I took a bus, and the bus took me from where where I was in Tusaquillo up to the Septima, Avenida Septima, the 7th Avenue, where I could walk through the edge of the Parque Nacional, the National Park, to where the university was situated. And I was carrying this big stereo. I had, I had my trousers and shirt on. I had my debit card, a cash, 
carrying this big sort of like ghetto blaster. So, stupidly, I'm sitting on the bus and these people at the back of the bus obviously thought, ah, gringo, stupido, gringo, no, no entiende, they don't understand nothing, blah, blah, blah. I get up to get off the bus. They get up to get off on the bus, causing a bit of a, like a diversion and a bit of a like confusion and whatever. And I feel something coming out of the top of my shirt pocket. Oh my God. I started screaming in Spanish and swearing. Ah, ladrones, ladrones, di 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 da da da. Really bad words. Screaming at the top of my lungs. They were shocked. Absolutely shocked. Llama la policía, llama la policía. Because the back doors were open. And I'm screaming this. Llama la policía, llama la policía. Which is call the police, call the police. Ladrones, thieves, ladrones. Oh my God. <laughs> I felt the money go back into my pocket and they got off the bus. I'm still shouting, and people are gathering around the back of the bus. The bus driver pulls up, and, you know, he's, he's getting up at the back of the bus as well. Everyone on the bus are walking up towards me. And, um, and then that was that, they left. I didn't get anything stolen from me. So yeah, if you know how to swear a lot in a certain language and uh, shout police and help. Ajudame, ajudame, policia. You should be all right. Right, I can't believe I'm waffling on now. Boring you to tears. So yeah, so anyway, so I lived in Colombia and I absolutely loved it. Fantastic period of my life. A uh, couple of things I would have changed, but in general. And I still keep in contact with students that I used to teach. Um, Alexander Basabe, my best friend Chepe. Uh, we're still in contact with him. Uh, he's like my Betty mate. So we, we do plan to go over there at some point to uh, to visit them because I think the other half would would like it a lot. I I loved it there. I loved what they called the chispa of the people. Very very good chispa. They were. What does it mean? It means that they were kind of. They'd had so much adversity over the years, mainly because of a lot of it to do with other countries interfering. But they'd had a lot of, there's so much diversity out there of music and food and culture. And it's such a fantastic place to go and visit. And the Colombian people are in generally, they're, they're really, really, really nice people. They really like to see foreigners, especially you know, if, if you're from somewhere unusual, like, you know, I'd always say that I was from Gales, from Wales, and uh, and if, if they didn't understand, it was kind of like, you know, I'm from where Diana, Princess Diana was from. They, they sort of, like, understood Princess Diana de Gales, so they understood what Wales was, but uh, it was always a bit better to try and explain that Gales, Wales, was a little country on its own. They didn't really understand that. So a little bit of knowledge goes far on both sides, especially my students, they were brilliant. I miss them, I miss the classes. But I do get to speak Spanish every now and then in work. We have some people that we deal with in Spain, in Madrid. And I always answer the phone to them because it comes up on the display on the switchboard. 0034 and I know it's, it's Spain calling so I'll always answer the phone. Buenos dias, open field, a la orden. Which they like, and I get to speak a bit of Spanish. But I don't get to speak as much as I used to. Right. I've bored you to tears with my stories of living in Colombia. I have a lot of stories of living in Colombia. A lot of cultural uh, faux pas that I made, which are quite funny. I miss it. I do miss Colombia. Sometimes I still have dreams that I'm there. It's weird. Very, very vivid, clear, clear, clear dreams. That I've gone back to live there or visit. So I should go back. Porque un parte de mi corazón siempre está en Bogotá y siempre está en Colombia. A little piece of my heart will always be in Bogotá and will always be in Colombia. 
through the good times and the bad times. Me and my friend Chet Baker, we used to get up to some fun, I tell you. He had this second-hand clothes shop. And, uh, oh, we'd always spend our money on stuff. We'd always, we always had no money. So, especially on a Sunday, and when I was on holidays in the university, there was a couple of times where we sort of, like, just had to get some sales for clothes, signing some clothes, just so we, so we could have lunch. It was so funny. Didn't have enough money for a pound of sausages some days. Right. This looks fan dabby dozy. Really genuinely on the outside looks very, very good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a spot of this grease down in the wheels. So, I'm just taking my dry cloth now. <clears throat> just any damp areas. <laughs> Pop the clean hose. clean hose back on. Now I'm just going to take the cloth over some little areas that I'm, I might have missed. has been going on for this boring 20 minutes <gasps> 20 minutes of boredom sorry guys you can fast forward that okay much better let's take a look inside this bag compartment so I'm just gonna run this cloth inside here Like I said, this is just a quick refurb that was blocked, so I'm going to clean it up for them. But uh, it's not sort of like one that I'm going to be doing up for, for, for my collection or anything. Although I will, like I said, I will keep my eyes out for one because I really do like it. But it will be a lot better for them. I'll pop in one of my air fresheners to make it smell now. I wonder if they probably, they may have the tools separate. Maybe they just didn't give me the tools. I shall find out. I'm looking for a date wheel. I did see a date wheel on the inside. This filter seems to be like a paper filter, so I can't wash it. So, unfortunately... I'm just going to wipe out this area. Briefly. Take off the heifer bag that I put on the heifer float. Wipe off the dust on the inside of this. I was going to strip it, but it doesn't need it. It's just a quick service. Just a quick tidy up. 
lots of little grooves on the inside of these because of vacuums in general because they uh, for airflow so there's a continuation of airflow to the side even though if the bag might be fuller it's not going to cause any issues and stop airflow so they have lots of little grooves on the inside of them to improve the airflow I really do like this rack, I have to say, I really do. I'm not going to be doing another demo on it because, uh, like I said, this is just going to go back to them tomorrow. Right, I'm going to finish cleaning the inside of this because I've bored you enough. So I'm just going to pop you on hold, pause. Okay, so I have finished cleaning it up. One last thing I have to do, which means I just need to take that off again. Just gonna spray it with some wax spray. Just to make it look nicer. It'll smell nice. A bit of a shine. Black look nice. It's in very good condition. There's not a lot of scratches on it, which is good. Cat and Carlos look after it. I think they will look after it a bit more now. Now when I've cleaned it. <laughs> Honestly, guys, it's a vacuum cleaner. Just use it. That's what it's there for. With a family with kids. Mucky kids. Oh, they do have cute kids. Little Grace and little Felix, who is quite new, newborn, a couple of months old. Right, so that now. Looking good, feeling great. Looking good, feeling great. Thin ankles. Thin ankles, sweetie, sweetie darling. There. Can't get any better than that. Now for the final time I am going to put this cord in. I've cleaned the cable and the plug. Cleaned all that up as well. We're going to switch it on. Excellent. So there we go. That is the Electrolux the Boss. Just a general clean and tidy up for a friend. Um, now it's all unblocked and it's got a lovely HEPA flow bag in it. I'll give her a couple of bags and uh, tell her that she can get them on online very, very cheap from Amazon and eBay or wherever. So uh, it'd be a lot better than the paper bags for her. Um, they're not perfect, but uh, they will definitely improve performance for her as well. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I haven't bored you too much with my wafflings. Um, big shout out to all my subscribers and all my friends. To Rob and Paul and George and Chris and Steve and Sam Watson and everybody that I have met through the means of these lovely machines. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Charlie Padfield, I hope the noise on this hasn't upset your hangover. No sympathy, self-inflicted. So I hope this hasn't uh, caused you any more headaches. 
So I will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.